Welcome back to our latest episode, guys. Today we are doing a long haul drive from Broome to Exmouth. It's 1,400 kilometers, and we want to take you along with us, showing you what it's really like living on the road. We come across some cool free camps along the way, and stick around because we're getting up to some campfire cooking later. We're starting off our journey driving from Broome to Port Hedland and staying at a little free camp out of there. If you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe to keep up to date with the adventures. We don't usually do a long drive like this. Normally we'd stop at all the sites along the way, but we are zooming to Exmouth to meet family there because we have a date with the Ninglu Reef. We've reached our first stop for the day and oh boy that was a long drive. This is Yule River campsite out of Port Hedland. Such a beautiful free camp. We're arriving at sunset and have driven all day just looking for a spot which will fit our bus. Truth is we didn't even leave the bus, we just went to sleep and we're going to continue on in the morning. And surprise, guess who is driving the bus for the first time? We have had the bus for a few months now, but Chris has done all the driving. I've never driven a big truck like this, but Chris has when he used to do work in the mines. Today we're driving six hours from Yule River campsite to another free camp around two hours outside of Exmouth. One thing we like to do for long haul drives is leave really early in the morning with no coffee or brekkie. So stopping for coffee and brekkie later is our reward. Let's talk the reality of driving arguments over lunch. So shortly after that, we pulled over and swapped drivers. I had only driven an hour, but I grew up driving small cars all my life and driving a bus is completely different. Chris was sick of my lead foot and I was sick of his backseat driving. So as a compromise, he's driving again. This is a big drive update. We've gone from Broome down Western Australia, past Karajini, we didn't stop there, we've already been which we'll make a video on later because we have heaps of awesome footage from that. Down to Port Hedland and now past Caratha. Now we're about to pass Onslow and our next stop is Exmouth. You get a lot of time to reflect and think while you're driving and you get a lot of ideas while you sit there. You listen to a lot of books. Time just goes and you have so much personal reflection and growth time to figure out what you really want and get in touch with yourself and things like that. And our goal in coming to Exmouth will be to move our bodies because we have spent so many hours sitting on our asses. So that is what we are looking forward to when we get there. Not far to go now. with our 
big drive to Exmouth. We're staying at Baradale Rest Area, which is a great free camp on your way. And Chris has just made this beautiful fire using wood from all the trees surrounding us. Sunsets, so we're just going to sit here and chill and then I'm going to attempt to make banana bread. So, fingers crossed I can make banana bread in our weird grill thing. <laughs> we don't want to waste the right bananas. Be enough to keep it going for a while? Yeah, it looks really good. You do a great job. What's your job? Drink beer, make coals good. <laughs> so cute. Man. It's looking really good. Nice work. Man. Okay, so I'm gonna try and make banana bread, but update, we're gonna try and make it on the fire. <laughs> what could go wrong? A few moments later. The flour exploded, but we are all good. We have faith that we can cook banana bread on a fire using the coals without burning it too much. It's gonna be delicious. Okay, so the truth is I tend to get distracted a lot and not really enjoy following recipes. So I usually mess up my banana bread and this time we're doing it on straight fire. So <laughs> we're just really hopeful this is gonna work, but we aren't leading you astray. This is a legitimate recipe. So follow it and you will be able to make some awesome banana bread on the fire. Now that we've added the dry ingredients to the wet ingredients, we line the cast iron pot with baking paper. Chriso has prepared the coals, so I'm going to put the batter in and take it over to him and we'll go from there. That's the back and open How does it look? It's pretty banana -y. Yep. A bit of lava. It's been 30 minutes, so let's go check on the cake. We opened up. was too much coals on the top. Uh, you ready? Yep. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's so slightly good. over. Oh, is that all ash? Yeah, yeah. It's so that. Mm, quite a lot. Let me just get the ash. Ready? <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. Ooh, that's pretty good. Hell yeah. That's actually really good. Yeah, I see that now, babe. Oh my god. We thought we'd messed up the cake because it came out black, but I did remember that the photo of the recipe had a black top as well. And when we've gone to eat it, you don't even notice it's like crispy, so fluffy on the inside. We reckon five minutes less next time, just so it's a little bit wet on the inside, because we both like our cake a little bit undercooked. But this is like cooked. 